After more than 10 years of building mobile apps and more than 20 years of building web apps, and also watching how new OS designs evolve, I had a little hunch about Mac OS Tahoe, and I'm probably not the only one. All those gorgeous translucent effects have a hidden cost in battery life, but I wanted to know exactly how much. So I ran a head-to-head -head battery test on four MacBook Airs, and I compared Sequoia to Tahoe. These are all dead now, by the way, because I killed them overnight. Here's the setup. I have the M1 MacBook Air, M2 MacBook Air, M3 MacBook Air, and M4 MacBook Air. You probably could have guessed. And I ran my own developer loop. That's what I call it. It's a battery test where I simulate how uh, my day goes. It's personal. I know. Very personal. It's kind of like what I do. Um, some of it is... A little bit shameful to admit, I do watch a lot of YouTube, but there's also coding in that loop. There's using other apps. There's using VS Code and building applications, running apps, running the code that I've built or that was automatically built, browsing the web and the browser is open with a bunch of tabs. And of course, watching a few videos. It's a consistent workflow that I built to see how long each machine lasts under the same conditions. I recently already tested all four of these on Mac OS Sequoia, so I had that already recorded. Then I upgraded to Mac OS Tahoe, let it settle and repeated the test. Now look, this is not anything new, okay? In 1984 is when this paper was published on compositing digital images. Wow, this thing is old. Look at that. Was it scanned in from a actual paper? Holy cow. All right, it talks about the alpha channel. Alpha is that transparency. In order to place an element over an arbitrary background, a mixing factor is required at every pixel to control the linear interpolation. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Scientific paper done by Porter and Duff. Pretty famous, actually. Talks about how images mix together. And basically, it just says that no matter what you do, there's going to be a cost associated to doing that. A computational cost. And computational has to be done on the CPU or GPU. And that's going to cost more battery time. When WebKit introduced their backdrop filters in 2015, this is for web rendering, of course, they introduced this property right here. And this talks about blurring on top of background. I used to try to do these kinds of things and try to figure out how to do this on the web back in the day when it was very hard to do, now it's easy. But since blurring operations are being done in the browser engine, we can take advantage of hardware support. That's how they're doing it. That's good for optimization for WebKit. But still, even though it results in very efficient operations, however, be warned, the nature of this backdrop effect forces the engine to perform more rendering passes, no matter what. You have to do that. And here comes Apple with this effect, which combines all sorts of things, not only translucency, but refraction, reflection. Uh, I don't even know what they're doing, but it's crazy. It looks cool. And certainly we have enough juice in these nowadays to last you all day of work. So is Apple thinking, oh, there's enough power in these. We'll just, we'll just do these cool effects so that we can use a little bit of that power, right? But what about at the end of the day? when you are running on that low battery and you're trying to eke out as much of it as possible to finish that job. Yes, it's delightful and it's elegant, but I personally, eh, I could go without that if it means getting more performance. As devs, our info ends up everywhere. Repos, bug trackers, random API signups. And that's a gold mine for data brokers who package your email, phone, and addresses and resell it. Fuel for phishing and even identity theft attempts. Well, they can't harm you if they can't find you. Incogni is my delete button for all that. In dozens of countries, data brokers are legally obliged to erase your info if you ask. Sure, you could chase them yourself, but that means digging up hundreds of brokers, arguing with each one, and circling back every few months to make sure they didn't sneak your data back in. I'd rather write code. Incogni fires those removal requests automatically and keeps hounding them until they comply. In my case, they've uncovered over 231 databases with my details and I've already wiped most of them. Wild. I use custom removals when I find a specific page exposing my info and I submit the link and a dedicated privacy expert handles the takedown and follow-ups for me. Take your personal data back with Incogni. Go to incogni.com slash alexiskind and use my code alexiskind for 60% off an annual plan and make yourself a smaller target. So let's get on to this test. This is the test harness I use. Basically just triggers this loop once every half an hour. So all the machines are always in sync. It's not like one does more work than the other one. They just kind of wait around playing a video at the end of the half an hour if it finished all the other tasks faster. And that way they can all be in sync and do the same amount of work. We're copying files, we're using to-do list, we're running some coding, doing browsing of documentation, using Notion, watching YouTube videos, more browsing, building a Blazor project, which is a .NET project. 
project, watching more YouTube videos, and all this while playing some music in the background. I set up a time-lapse video. Here I am, started at 9.57 p.m. There they go. You might recognize some of those videos I'm watching. And you notice here that I have actually two M4 MacBook Airs. They're just different configurations that I tested at the same time. But I already showed this test result earlier. This proved to me that this was a good test and they were very consistent because those two M4 MacBook Airs died pretty much at the same time. The first one to go here was the M3 MacBook Air. Lasted only a few hours. There's the M2. The M1 lasted a very long time, which was really nice. That M1, so good. M4s both died after 4 a.m. That's pretty good. And then finally, the M1 dies a little bit after that, almost at 4.30 a.m. That's crazy. So that was Sequoia, and that was a couple months ago. And here I've got Tahoe, and I forgot to align the MacBook, so they look nice on the desk. Never mind all that. I fixed it, <laughs> but I already started the test. So this was 10.07 uh, p.m. By the way, I did this test twice. The first time, my camera ran out of shots. So yeah, that was fun walking in the morning and everything is dead but I don't have the shots. This is all running on Tahoe now, but I gotta say that a lot of these operations are just switching windows. Sure, there's that animation between switching windows, but there isn't that much going on that's using transparency, except for that maybe dock, which uh, is showing that transparent background image, the default Tahoe on whatever they're using there, a place I really wanna visit. So not much animation or translucency happening here, but we still should feel a little bit of the effect here. Oh, the M2 died first this time, not the M3. M3 dies next. And again, the M1 is showing its strength here in computational power and battery life. And so is the M4. The M4 is really just an amazing machine. And the M1 holds out for the winner. Now the question is, did this last shorter or longer or about the same as Sequoia for each one of these machines? M1 MacBook Air lasts six and a half hours on Sequoia. M4, six hours, 13 minutes. M2, five hours, 33 minutes. And M3, that just looks really, really short and bad. I, I don't know, just so short. Whatever was happening over there, this might be the anomaly here, the M3. Now let's take a look at Tahoe, almost an hour less time we got with the M1 MacBook Air on Tahoe. About 45 minutes less with the M4 MacBook Air on Tahoe. Yeah, we're getting less usage on Tahoe. I, I hate to say I told you so, but that's what we're seeing here. I'm not happy about this. I'm not happy because we all have to upgrade to this, right? Eventually, Apple kind of, you know, makes you do that. Here, the M3 and M2 kind of look normal. They're very close to each other. Four hours, 48 minutes for the M3 four hours, 24 minutes for the M2. But if we take a look at the M2 time, it's still almost an hour less on Tahoe than it is on Sequoia. The only weird anomaly is that M3, which is showing that it's actually longer on Tahoe than Sequoia. Uh, I don't know about that. The Tahoe numbers seem a little bit more realistic. Something must have been going on with the uh, Sequoia timing for the M3. It's quite possible. Or maybe M3 is just that much better on Tahoe than it is on Sequoia, but highly unlikely. So why might this be happening? Well, when you introduce effects like Apple's liquid glass, which adds translucency, blur, all these fancy visual layers, the system has to do more work. It's capturing what's behind the window, applying the blur, and then compositing everything together. Now, that's just uh, kind of a layman's uh, my understanding of what's happening there's probably a lot more things going on and each of those steps cost the cpu and gpu cycles and that translates into battery usage apparently it's not just a theory now there's real measurable impact apple already has been optimizing this they added a little bit more frost since the initial betas came out to kind of minimize that translucency. They also gave you a few different things to work with if you're developing for this uh, system. NS Glass Effect Container View will be able to merge descendant glass effect views together within specified proximity to each other. Using this container can improve performance by reducing the number of passes required to render similar glass effect views. So if you're doing this kind of development, go ahead and use all the different things that Apple provided to you to be able to mitigate these issues. Issues. Ugh. Just create issues and then mitigate them. Okay.
I guess that's one way to do it. Um, if you're not an Apple developer and if you're just using the system, then there's probably a few things you can do to reduce transparency. There's there's some settings in there. I'm not going to go into it in this video, but you can Google it. It's pretty easy. I'm certainly going to be turning that on. So if you prioritize battery over aesthetics, you might want to consider reducing transparency effects or waiting for some further optimizations that are sure to come i hope so apple come on optimize that stuff so always keep in mind those pretty effects they always come at a cost there are settings you can tweak but i just wish that just wish we didn't have them we don't need them it's just not necessary i want to have a performant computer please i'm not even starting to talk about ios because that's a whole different story it's not exactly my area but i'm a user and i've noticed ios 26 yeah, there's definitely issues there. My battery lasts only half a day now instead of pretty much all day. So there's that. To see my developer MacBook Air reviews on Sequoia, watch that video right over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.